Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. This is episode 260. And my name is Emily Rainbow Davis. Thank you for listening. And I have an update for last week's blogcast. You may recall that last week's episode was called They Locked Up the Toothpaste, which was about my drugstore where they locked up the toothpaste. Uh, And I was back in that drugstore yesterday to pick up some medication. And uh, I noticed that they have not only kept the toothpaste locked up, but they have also locked up the soap and the deodorant. I mean... My goodness. <laughs> it is, it, it's just really so... Uh, I, I don't have the word for it. Like, mean-spirited or something? Anyway, <laughs> that's the update, is they've locked up a lot more things than I realized. Not just the toothpaste. Just basically anything that you would use to keep yourself clean and have a modicum of dignity. Those are the things that are locked up at my drugstore. Anyway, today's episode is about something totally different. Uh, This one is about a television performance. And for once, it's not a Spanish television show. It's a Mexican television show. It's uh, The House of Flowers, La Casa de las Flores. And uh, I will read you more about it here in the blog. It is called Paulina... Forgot to cancel the mariachi. When I started watching the Mexican TV show House of Flowers, I was immediately struck by this one character's way of speaking. She spoke so slowly and strangely, I thought maybe the actor was a non-native speaker, which would have been odd for a show about a family. I was so curious about this actor's voice, I looked her up, and discovered that no, in fact, she is Mexican, though she trained in the U.S. and worked at Steppenwolf, no less. I had no explanation for this voice, but I was still intrigued. Then a few episodes in, I had another question about this show, so I looked it up on Wikipedia and suddenly discovered that this character's voice was a phenomenon. It had captivated people around the world and even became a social media viral sensation. I learned that Cecilia Suarez, the actor, brought a version of the voice to the show and the writer-director encouraged her to take it further. It is, apparently, modeled on the speech of some upper-crust Mexicans they knew, so it traveled from a highly specific population to social media challenges around the world. My favorite crossover is the actors from the Cable Girls in Spain doing this voice from Mexico. Netflix based their advertising campaign for season two of this show on the popularity of the character Paulina's voice. It's huge, apparently. The thing that delights me about this story is that the center of it is an actor's choice. An actor looked at this character on the page and felt like she had a take on it. She tried a bold choice, and her writer-director didn't just approve it. He asked her to take it further. Another thing I love about this is that she's about my age. So this celebration of an acting phenom is not of some fresh-faced newcomer, but an experienced veteran of the craft. She's a Gen X phenom, not a kid. It is such a good example of why we train. A novice would never even consider such a thing. And it's not just a silly voice. It's a style grounded in the given circumstances of the piece, in the guts of the character, in such a way that it reveals things about her we wouldn't otherwise know. I also love that this celebration of an acting choice is happening in a comedy. Usually it is only drama that draws admiration from the outside world, but this comedy performance is shaking up those norms. I know there are likely many things I'm missing about it. I'm sure if my Spanish were better, I'd catch details upon details. But as it stands, I can catch a lot just from sound and tempo. To even be able to notice a vocal change in a language I don't really speak feels extraordinary. It just feels like the perfect model for collaboration in the dramatic arts. 
when we teach acting, we are always talking about choices. When we praise an actor, we praise their choices. When we're looking for someone with some spirit, we choose someone who makes bold choices. But it is very difficult to find an instance where we see this in practice so vividly. Part of the reason awards tend to go to actors who have crying scenes is that it is the most visible demonstration of someone acting. But there are choices happening all the time that are just not obvious. Cecilia Suarez's voice choice is clearly a choice, and a choice that was developed and nurtured in a collaborative process. Both actor and director took a risk in going with it. It's odd. A more skittish director would never have approved it, and a less bold actor would never have proposed it. It's a risk for both of them. But they went forward with it, and it seems that everyone loved it. There are memes of this actor now. There are videos and tweets and TikToks and Instagrams. This voice is a hit. And I find myself delighted, not just by the voice itself, though it is a delight, but by the worldwide celebration of an acting choice. It's something this actor is doing on purpose. It is something she created. It's not a famous person she's imitating or a disability she's pretending to have. It's a bona fide acting choice. It has become one of those things that would help me explain what an actor does. So many times, acting seems like it's just a person being themselves in front of a camera, saying other things than what they usually say. But Cecilia Suarez is acting. She made a big choice, and now we get to enjoy her acting her face off with that extraordinary voice. So, of course, you need to hear this voice. Uh... There are many, many clips online. There's a link to uh, many of her hit lines um, in the blog post, and I'll put one in the show notes as well. Netflix, you know, basically collected them with, like, subtitles so you can, like, read along. And I thought I'd be super clever and figure out how to record audio from my computer so you could hear the voice directly. Uh, but... It, it turned into quite a project <laughs> that I could not solve. It was so quiet, and uh, I know there's, I'm sure, a very sensible way to do it, but I either get a lot of feedback or just, just so, so quiet that you could not hear it. So uh, if you want to hear her, her voice directly, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, you'll have to click on links. But meanwhile, I can give you a close approximation to my how I hear her uh, voice. So the famous line, which I'm referencing in the title of this piece, is Olvide uh, cancelar el mariachi. That's my attempt to do Cecilia Suarez's Paulina. Uh, there are a lot of very choice lines, uh, but that is the most famous where she forgot to cancel the mariachi, which is it's funny in and of itself. It's a funny line. And I did a little bit of research because I discovered that she does her own dubbing for the dubbed English version of the show. And I was like, is she doing the voice in English as well? And she's not, at least from what I can tell. I sort of scanned around into a few different episodes to see if I could hear any kind of particular like vocal quality that is similar to how she does it in Spanish. And uh, no, she's not doing it because it's, I think it's a particular to, you know, particular sound and idea to Mexico when we do not have an equivalent in English is my, is my guess. Um, but yeah, I, I was so curious to know if she would also do the voice in English and she, she doesn't, I think. Yeah. Anyway, that, that was very interesting to me. Um, so, uh, it's a delightful show. It's very silly and super campy and soapy and ridiculous in many ways. Um, but she is really something. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much for listening. And, um, 
If you like the podcast, please tell someone about it. Share it on the social medias, like, review, subscribe, all of the things. If you would like to support it with your dollars, patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis is the top place. PayPal, Kofi, also nice and awesome. Um, and of course, just, you know, sharing and just listening, frankly, is pretty great. Um, for the song today, I have to offer you a song from the show. <laughs> so I, I've been listening to the soundtrack, trying to find like the, the like the song. Um, and then I watched the, uh, the, the like last part of the show and it was a movie. They had the house of flowers movie. Um, which apparently just came out. I thought I was super behind, but it literally came out days before I watched it. Um, but anyway, there's a song that appears in that movie, um, sung by uh, a different character, not Paulina. <clears throat> Carmelita is the character. Um, and she's sort of in the past. There's a couple of lines of time happening in the later later seasons. Uh, anyway, she sings a song in the movie, and as soon as she started it, I was like, this is the one. <laughs> I just, like, immediately knew this is the song I'm going to learn, and uh, it is really fantastic. <laughs> I, am, I, I have enjoyed learning this song so much. Um, the song is called, it translates to The Cat in the Rain, it may be the campiest song I've ever heard. Uh, it's like someone left the cake out in the rain kind of territory, I feel. Um, but like much more, I don't know, I can't, I can't well, it's much more Mexican and much more Spanish for one thing. Um, but also just like, like I feel like it's like a, the song is like a soap opera in a song form. And it is glorious. Um, it was sung originally in the 80s um, by a Spanish singer from Spain. And uh, I guess subsequent hits have also been sung by S S Spanish folk from Spain. Um, but the singer in the television show is Mexican. Um, and I would love to find a recording of her performance of it because it is fabulous. Um, she has a a little meowing section, which is just amazing. Um, I, I do not, I did not do it, but I, I bow down to her. It's really glorious. Um, so La Gata Bajo La Lluvia will be coming here in a moment. And I want you to know that I played it on ukulele with a very specific reason which is not just that it's easier to play stuff on ukulele in here. And it is in the, I think in the second season, there's a, there's a moment in the show where Paulina is like leaving prison. She's been in prison because, you know, this show is a soap opera basically. And she's leaving prison and this woman is in her cell playing a ukulele. And, the, and Paulina says to her, I, I don't, I haven't looked at the dialogue and, Spanish and I sort of only remember the quick translation but she basically says were you the one who called me fresa I do remember that what this word was because I looked it up <laughs> because they translated it to preppy and I was like no 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 I know that doesn't mean preppy <laughs> um but anyway so she says did you were you the one who called me fresa and the woman playing the ukulele says something I can't remember what and then they have a whole exchange about it. And then Paulina says something like, there is nothing more fresa than a ukulele. And uh, I feel it is, it's a moment of vindication for Paulina. And I, I felt that because the ukulele was so fresa, I absolutely needed to use it to sing this song. Uh, fresa. I, I, I don't know what the English equivalent. I'm sure they went with preppy because they couldn't find a better one. I, I think bougie, maybe, would be the word someone would use today. Here? Bourgeois? No, not bourgeois. Just bougie. Bougie. Or maybe what's that new word that, that I don't even know how to pronounce? Chuggy? 
something. It's like something, but preppies, no one calls anyone preppy anymore. So that's, that's not that. <laughs> anyway, apparently people do not like to be called fresa in Mexico. So watch it. <laughs> anyway, here is La Gata Bajo la Lluvia. And uh, I hope that you enjoy it. Look it up and listen to its many other iterations. It is a joy. Amor, tranquilo, no te voy a molestar. Mi suerte está echada, ya lo sé. Y se cae un torrente dando vueltas por tu mente, amor. Lo nuestro solo fue casualidad. La misma hora, el mismo boulevard. No temas, no hay cuidado. No te culpa haber pasado. Y a la vez, la vida es así. Tú te vas y yo me quedo aquí. Yo verá y ya no seré tuya. Seré la gata bajo la lluvia. Y me hallaré por ti. Amor. Lo sé, no digas nada de verdad. Si ves alguna lágrima, perdón. Ya sé que no has querido hacer llorar un caterino amor. Si alguna vez nos vemos por ahí, invítame un café y hazme el amor. Y si ya no vuelvo a verte, ojalá que tenga suerte. Y a lo ves, la vida es así. Tú te vas y yo me quedo aquí. Yo verá y ya no seré tuya. Seré la gata bajo la lluvia. La vida es así, tú te vas.